tuition free. Three months paid family and medical leave. Health care is a right of all people, not a privilege. Are you stupid or something? This video was made possible by my patrons. Just another ANCAP, Joshua Bartlett, Scorch88, and all other patrons at the additional tiers. Thank you so much to all of you. Hello everyone, this is My Two Cents. You may have heard that Bernie Sanders, everyone's favorite democratic socialist, is set to announce a new plan that he'll be fighting for in America. A plan that will provide a job paying $15 an hour, guaranteed, and free health care benefits guaranteed to anyone who, quote, wants one or needs one. As Jeff Stein in the Washington Post writes, the push reflects a leftward move in the party's economic policy, away from President Barack Obama's use of public-private partnerships or government incentives to reshape private markets and toward an unambiguous embrace of direct government intervention. Ah, direct government intervention. In other words, central planning. That's right, Bernie has taken yet another step to the left, proving that as we've been saying all along, democratic socialism is still socialism. As much as some moderate lefties try and claim that there is a difference, time always bears out that every policy Bernie and his ilk put forward are merely short steps towards their goal of full-blown Marxism. It's never worked any time in history, but don't worry, it'll work this time. So, how do we go about showing that Bernie's plan is bunk? In this video, I'd like to explain what it means any time a politician uses the words free and guaranteed in their rhetoric. Provided you know the true meaning of these words, it will be easy to debunk any argument in favor of higher taxes and more government programs, no matter how caring and good intention the person making the argument may be. So first, what does free mean? Well, Dictionary.com defines it as without cost or payment. However, anytime someone says something is free, it can only mean free for the individual recipient. I've said it before and I'll say it again. Nothing in life is free. Someone pays. Even if you didn't personally pay a cent for whatever it was that you received, someone out there did. Let's imagine a doctor. This doctor is the most selfless man on the planet. Out of a sheer desire to help people and make the world a better place, he chose to become a doctor and treat patients for free. And I mean he does it without receiving a cent for his efforts. Now, never mind the questions of who will pay for the facilities, equipment, and medications that he'll need to fulfill his responsibilities, or how he plans to put food on the table or a roof over his own head. But even in this scenario, is the healthcare free? No. Sure, for the patient it is, but the doctor is still expending his time and labor in order to treat patients. Time, labor, and resources are required to produce any good or service that a person wants or needs, and so no matter what we're talking about, someone must pay, either voluntarily in a free market or at gunpoint via the state. Which brings us to the word guarantee. So what's the definition of the word guarantee? Well, Dictionary.com defines guarantee as a formal promise or assurance that certain conditions will be fulfilled. To illustrate, suppose I'm an entrepreneur trying to start a business that will sell an amazing new product. However, startup costs are steep, so I'm going to need to take out a loan or secure investors to help me pay the startup costs. Understandably, they're not just going to fork over the money the moment I knock on the door. I'm going to have to convince them that my product is useful, cheap to produce, and in demand, such that they have good reason to believe that they will receive return once I've started the business and made a sufficient number of sales. However, could I guarantee them that they will receive return? Of course not. Now, I might be reasonably certain. If I wasn't, I wouldn't be going forward with my business plan. However, I would be foolish to tell them that they are guaranteed return. Why? Because I can't force anyone to buy my product. No matter how confident I am in my business plan, I can never guarantee I will succeed because people will have to voluntarily choose to buy my product. In fact, any time someone other than the government tells you that return on an investment is guaranteed, you're dealing with a scam. So why is it then that Bernie can guarantee jobs under his plan? 
Well, for exactly the reason I can't. Unlike me, the government will force taxpayers to give up their money in order to finance jobs in these new sectors. Infrastructure, caregiving, and environment being a few named by the Washington Post. Heck, with the use of, gov of force, the government could guarantee $15 an hour to dig holes and then fill them back up again. Anytime the government guarantees anything, it does so for only one reason. Because no matter how inefficient or unsuccessful its endeavors are, the government can always ensure that its projects stay afloat by stealing more money in the form of taxes. To illustrate the difference between private and state-provided services in this regard, let's consider education. Americans have long complained, and rightly so, that American students perform significantly worse than students of numerous other nations worldwide. If we had only private schools, this wouldn't be a problem. If a certain private school were notorious for producing less than stellar students, parents would eventually cease sending their children there, using their money to pay someone else who could do a better job. Only those schools that provided the highest quality education for the lowest cost could survive. Private schools can't guarantee income because parents can't be forced to send their students there. However, the U.S. largely utilizes public school systems. Over the past few decades, the government has increased spending dramatically on public schools, and yet there is no corresponding increase in student performance. It's a vicious cycle. Every 10 years or so, people cry out, the schools are failing. Then the educators say, give us more money and we'll fix the problem. The government does, raising taxes and engaging in more deficit spending, and the cycle repeats. There is no end in sight because the people can't choose not to fund public schools. The money is taken by force through taxes. In truth, those parents that do pay to send their kids to, to private schools actually pay twice since their tax money is in part used for public schools, be it federal, state, or local taxes. And while we're on the subject, Let's discuss why the government would have to create jobs in the infrastructure, caregiving, and environmental markets in the first place. In a free market, wherever there is demand for some good or service, and that good or service can be produced for cheaper than it would sell in the market, some private actor will produce it. This is how supply and demand works. Therefore, if any good or service is not produced in the market, it can only be because there is either no demand for it, or the cost of producing it would be higher than anyone would be willing to pay. For example, you don't run into a lot of people selling pet rocks anymore. This may have been a short-lived fad in the 1970s, but there is simply not enough demand for pet rocks for this to be a profitable enterprise. By the same token, you run into very few people selling flying cars. After years of work to make flying cars a reality, such a thing is possible. And in theory, there is demand for them. I mean, who wouldn't, who wouldn't want to have a flying car? However, the cost of producing them is so substantially high that the vast majority of consumers would be unable to afford one. So what does it mean if the government creates jobs where the free market has not done so already? It can only mean that there is no demand for the goods or services that the jobs would produce, or that the market already determined that such jobs would be an inefficient waste of resources. In either case, government spending on guaranteed jobs ensures that there will be a surplus of goods and services that were not in demand, and a shortage of goods and services that are in demand, because resources were reallocated to other areas by government force. You never spend someone else's money as efficiently as you spend your own, especially when you know that more money is guaranteed by the use of force. Countries like the USSR already learned this the hard way, so why should any other nation make the same mistake? Oh wait, that didn't work. You had to sit in the bus all night. Ah, it'll work this time. In conclusion, let's ask how much Bernie anticipates all this will cost. Funny how that comes up, since it's supposedly free and guaranteed. According to the Washington Post, a rep from Sanders' office said that a cost analysis has not yet been done. Well, the Tax Policy Center and the Urban Institute already estimated that Bernie's Medicare for All plan would cost approximately $3 trillion a year. And that's on the low end. So if we factor in guaranteed $15 an hour jobs for every unemployed person in America, whew, I don't even want to do that math. Further, don't let Bernie's rhetoric about how the 1% need to pay their fair share fool you. Ted Cruz already pointed out in the last debate they did on CNN that even if we confiscated 100% of the revenue of every American that makes more than $1 million a year, 
it only produces about a trillion dollars in revenue. So where will the rest of that money come from? That's right, the middle class and the lower income families that this plan is supposedly supposed to help. One final point. According to Bernie, quote, their plan would drive up wages by significantly increasing competition for workers, ensuring that corporations have to offer more generous salaries and benefits if they want to keep their employees from working for the government. Ha, this sounds great. Higher wages due to competition, right? That's really free market of him. Wrong. The government can guarantee these high wages whether the worker's labor is really worth that much or not because their income is coming in by force. But smaller businesses especially won't be able to compete for the simple fact that their profit margins are not high enough to pay workers more than they're worth. These businesses will close, leading to more unemployment and increasing the number of unemployed workers that the government will be legally required to employ. However, now there will be fewer businesses operating in the private sector, which means fewer persons to obtain tax revenue from. Where does this lead? Collapse. When there is no longer anyone left to tax. As Margaret Thatcher so famously said, the problem with socialism is that eventually you run out of other people's money. So remember, anytime someone from the government says the words free and guaranteed, they mean Taxpayers pay whether they want to or not, and guaranteed because if you don't pay, we'll throw you in prison. This situation always leads to an inefficient waste of resources because you never spend someone else's money as efficiently as you spend your own. And you're not really worried if your services fail because you can always demand more money in the future. Bernie's rhetoric only sounds good to those that don't understand basic economics, and continue to ignore the fact that socialism has never worked before. What makes you think it'll work this time, Bernie? And that is my two cents. Take it for what it's worth. Thanks everyone for watching. If you liked this video, please hit like and subscribe. You can also hit the bell to ensure you're notified every time I upload a new video. This video was made possible by my patrons. If anyone else would like to donate and help ensure that I have the time and resources to keep putting out content, for just $1 a month on Patreon or Maker Support, you'll have your name listed in the end credits of every video and the link to one of your social media platforms listed in the description. You can also support the channel by purchasing My Two Cents merchandise on Teespring. You can also follow me on Twitter, Minds.com, BitChute, WordPress, Gab, and iTunes. Uploads are every Thursday and Saturday, so stay tuned for more videos.